at the lowest point in my life when everything was falling apart i was at the shop the phone rings my wife is on the phone gina says the landlord is outside the house i'm like i'll be right there i jump in my truck i drive home he's not there nobody's there i walk inside and my wife's like hey i think i saw him yesterday and he was out there parked looking at our house i'm like the next time you see him right there call me but call the cops because this is not okay. At this point in my life, I'm, I'm losing my company. A lot of you shop owners, you remember the time when all the work left and we were fighting to get work. We were fighting to survive and, and tens and tens and thousands of companies went out of business. There is nothing I could do. I was sitting at my desk in my office. I have a negative bank account. I got 20 CNCs outside. All the work that I was doing got put on hold because the whole economy crashed. I'm doing aerospace work for big rocket companies, but it's just not enough. In a couple weeks, I'm done. I was paying the rent for my building. I was paying $24,000, and then I was subleasing part of the other building, but my landlord understood that I was in trouble because I was in arrears on the rent for about two to three months. So now I'm paying my rent, but he can see I'm going down. And instead of coming in and helping me, he's threatening me. So I'm looking, what do I do? While back, months back, I looked at bankruptcy and bankruptcy was not an option. I couldn't even get a lawyer on the phone because everyone was going out of business. So that day I was praying and I was like, Lord, Please save this shop. Please, Lord, I know you gave it to me, all that. You know, I, I look at my computer and I, I just felt it inside. Look for a lawyer. I Googled lawyers in Auburn, California. And all of a sudden, I see, I go down, I see the name, Steve Johnson. I look, I call his office. The office, like his secretary answers. I tell her, hey, this is my situation. I need to get a quick meeting with Steve. She says, I will make something happen at 11 o'clock tomorrow. I'm like, before it was months and now I'm getting in there at 11 o'clock. So I hang up the phone excited that I'm gonna to talk to somebody. I didn't wanna do bankruptcy, I didn't wanna do anything, but I just wanted to know what the laws were. I wanted to know if this guy could threaten me. I just wanted to know what other people knew. So. When I hang up the phone, I just had that gut instinct. That's not quick enough. So I call back. And I'm like, do you have anything earlier? And she says, we have an eight o'clock. I'm like, I'll take that eight o'clock. I go in, I sit down. Steve Johnson is a lawyer that's retired. He used to be in the Bay Area. He retired, moved to our area, and he was an amazing guy. So we completely hit it off. He tells me we'll have another meeting. He'll come to the shop. We'll analyze everything and we'll work together to keep me in business. And that way everybody wins. And of course, that is what I needed to hear. So I go back to the shop and right when I walk in, I talk to my, my office manager. I talk to a couple of my lead guys. We go into a room to talk about Steve Johnson and what had just happened. All of a sudden, there's a glass outside the, the conference room and the landlord for the building comes walking up. Now, this is Friday. So I open a door, walk out. Hey, I will have your money at two o'clock for this week. I was paying on a weekly basis. And he's like, never mind that small payment. I want all of it or I'm shutting your power down. I'm putting locks on your door and we're gonna close this thing up. He walks away. I walk back in the room in disbelief that at that very moment, I have hours until I get chains put on my door. I call Steve Johnson and I tell him what had happened. He says, give me his number. So I give him the number. He calls the landlord. The landlord tells him that I have faulty electrical and anybody in my shop, anybody that knows me knows that everything is pristine. The shop is pristine, the processes, 
everything, my electrical, the lighting, everything is by the book and it is to a high level. So Steve actually just happens to know an expert electrician who owns his own company who comes over and does an evaluation and does a document and basically says, this is the best electrical job I've ever seen. Steve calls the landlord, threatens to go to court, gives them the document, does all that, puts the whole thing to rest for a minute. All of a sudden, Steve comes over and it's Monday the next week and he comes over to the shop and we talk and we talk and stuff and he's like, what can you do? What can you pay? We got to figure some things out. Do you want to stay in this building? I'm like, no, I can't afford this building. Like I have 35,000 square feet. I'm only using less than 10 now. I really need to downsize, but he won't let me just take one of the buildings. He's like, let me negotiate that. Lawyer comes back. Hey Titan, I've talked to the landlord and I've never seen somebody so rigid. He is not willing to negotiate. He's not willing to do anything. He wants all of his money right now. But I have a negative bank account. All of this work is gone. I'm getting new work. I'm figuring it out. But I've already laid off 40 employees. If I lay anybody else off, I won't have a company. Steve looks at me and he says, you have to move. You have to get your machines. You need to move to a different building. So I suggest you go find a building. I have no money for trucks. I have no money. I, I don't even have money to pay my bills. How would I ever move my company? I go home, like I'm just praying, Lord, like show me what you need me to do. Like whatever you want, I will do. I give it all up to you. How do I save my company? Bill Selway, one of the greatest men in industry calls me up that Wednesday and he tells me, Titan, you have highs and you have lows and you just have to ride that wave and you got to make it happen. The more experience you get, the more knowledge you get, the more that you go through it, you'll get better and better. They can take everything from you, Titan, but they can't take your talent. So if you lose everything, you will rebuild it. At that time, I didn't want to hear those words. I wanted to save my company. I wanted to keep everything just how it was, but everything was falling apart. That night I go to church and I'm thinking, Bill says he will take some of the machines from me, basically repossess the machines. I'm thinking to myself, he put his name on the line for me. Like he trusted me. And now I'm gonna let him repo some of my machines. Like what kind of human being am I to allow that to happen? And I'm struggling and wrestling and, and just trying to figure out like, what am I going to do? We go to church, me and Gina, and I'm just thinking about it as I walk in, I'm not thinking about my surroundings. I'm just thinking about, I'm losing the company. What do I do? I don't have money. I know that there is a plan for my life. This doesn't make sense. Do I trust this lawyer? What do I do? I sit down next to Gina. I look forward. Then all of a sudden I feel something. I turn around. I look back and right behind me is Steve Johnson looking at me. He's like, you go to this church. I'm like, I go to this church. 60,000 people in that greater area. And on that night, during that struggle, I'm sitting right next to a man that I've never met in my life that has the keys to possibly help me out of this situation. At that moment, I was convicted. I need to trust this man. Whatever he says, I need to follow that plan. We leave church and we, and we drive up to the old buildings. The buildings where we started our company, where we slept in the shop, where we worked 24 seven to make all of this happen. I go up there just to look at it, just to stand on the ground where it all started. And as I go up, I see for lease, for lease, for lease. I'm in awe because they were all filled up. There were people leasing these buildings just a month before and all of a sudden they're all open. I get chills. I just know something's going to happen in my head. I'm like, absolutely, Lord, I'm going to follow this guy, Steve, and something's going to happen. I'm just going to do the right thing. I sent an email that night to Bill Selway. I'm going to keep the machine. I'm going to fight for this. We're going to go after it. 
I'm not going to run away from my responsibilities or what I owe, but we're going to figure this out. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to figure this out. I wake up early in the morning to a phone call. I answer the call. It's Malibu Boats. You know the wakeboard boating company, Malibu Boats? And they're like, Titan, do you still have the EC400, the VF11? Do you have the VF6? Do you have the SO40? Do you have all of these machines? And can we rent these machines from you? And they were like, Titan, all of a sudden, we're incredibly busy. We're loading containers. We're shipping out a ton of parts out to Australia, and we don't have the parts. Machines are down. Vendors are down. We have no options. We want to rent your machines, bring up the material. We'll bring up a programmer and a person to set everything up, and we will put our own employees on your floor to run those parts. My response, okay. The exact day after I go to bed, after I realize that the buildings are for lease, that I can take 10,000 square feet from these buildings, right when I see the light and I understand that I need to trust this man, Malibu Boats calls the very next morning before I even wake up. Who does that? How does that happen? It is the craziest situation. I go to work, I tell everyone within days, we had pallets of material, we had somebody in the shop who's setting up all the jobs on the machines, and Malibu Boats pays me exactly $100,000 early, the exact amount of money that I needed to move and take care of bills and get out of that building. From there, Steve Johnson made up a contract with the landlord to do long-term payments, and as my income raised, my payments would go up. And he made deal after deal after deal. I moved the company up to the building. I built the shop back up. And now we're just climbing again, like we did years back. But this time, things are changed. Because the first time, I was out competing, out bidding, I was getting after it. I knew the company would make a difference, but I didn't know how it was gonna make a difference. And at that time, I was just solving problems, making money, getting after it, hiring and going up. And then it all crashed. I lost my house, I lost my cars, I lost everything. I barely escaped to these other buildings. And I was hurt by that. I was hurt looking at the economy and looking at the nation and the world and seeing thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of companies going out of business. I understood how they felt. I understood their pain and they understood my pain. And at that time I made a decision. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna dedicate my entire life to lifting up this trade and teaching machine shop owners how to compete. I didn't know how big it was gonna get. I didn't know that I was gonna have a TV show. I didn't know the path, but all of a sudden I had the passion and I had the word inside me. Some people say that I'm passionate. Some people say I'm over the top, but they don't understand what I went through to get here. And they don't understand that there are mom and pop shops all across this great nation, all across the world that are struggling right now. Those shops, that's who we're fighting for right there. Now you know a little bit more about my crazy story and you know the why to change the trade, to lift up manufacturing, to get after it. I'm thankful to all my partners, my incredible team. I had no idea at that time that I was gonna have a TV show, that we were gonna go online and bring incredible awareness. I had no idea, but I understood that I had a word, I had power in me, and I understood that I needed to unleash it, and I wanted to affect this trade in a positive way and do something incredible, and that is why I drive forward. I'm thankful for for you. I'm thankful for this trade from my team. I love you guys. Now you know a little bit more about the story. Boom. I'm out.